watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Yay! For the community, by the Princess Bola Adilani, the total success coach, welcoming you to the debut of my TV program, Inspired Success, the, your monthly dose of inspiration power. This program is designed to equip you with the power and inspiration for total success. That is success at work and in life. As this marks the beginning of um, our on-air relationship, it is imperative that we start with introductions. I'd like to introduce myself to you, who I am, what I do, and in return, I'd like you to also introduce yourself to me by sending me an email and just you know, sharing a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, like I said earlier, let's go to what, who I am. I said earlier that I'm Princess Bola Adilani. I'm a total success coach. I'm the president and founder of Royal Proclamations. Royal Proclamations is a corporate training, career and life coaching, and motivational speaking firm that's located in Hartford, Connecticut. My professional background and training is in corporate law. I'm a British trained corporate attorney with almost 10 years of experience in the corporate world. I gave up my legal career as the result of finding individuals living beneath their full potential, finding that individuals lacked the knowledge to reach their dreams, and I founded Royal Proclamations. My mission with Royal Proclamations is simple, is to equip individuals, business professionals, students, and others with the knowledge, with the power, the motivation, and the skills to enable them to realize their potentials and reach their dreams. And as a result, people often ask me, you know, this question uh, when I speak um, so much uh, I, I, in all kinds of venues. They ask me this question about my princess, the princess piece of my name. They ask me whether it's my name, whether it's my title. You know, they want to know a bit more about the princess piece. And I never answer that million dollar question. I often would direct people to my website. Um, go to www.royalproclamations.com, click on my bio, and in the last sentence, you would um, find the answer to that question there. So I, like I said, I hope you would reciprocate the gesture. You've, I, you know who I am, you know what I do, you know my mission, you know that I'm a coach, you know I'm a life coach and business coach, I'm a corporate trainer and a motivational speaker. And um, I hope you will re reciprocate the gesture and send me an email and introduce yourself to me. I'd really, really like to get to know you. And so we're going to go straight into today's um, message. And I've titled today's message um, as Get a Grip, America. There is power and there is purpose in adversity. Yes, that's my message. Get a grip. Get a grip. There is power and there is purpose in adversity. This message was birthed out of my concerns. You know, I've, I've, having observed the reactions, the reactions of us as a people to our present um, economic predicament. You know, our, our, our reactions of utter despair, a reaction of depression, of fear, of, of, of even suicide. I mean, I'm sure you heard about the, um, 
the man in California who, because he lost his job, and he and his wife lost his job on the same day, they were laid off on the same day, came home, killed his wife, and shot their five children. You know, I find such reactions very alarming. Um, it's almost bordering on, on mass hysteria. And I, I, I decided that, you know, this, this message needs to go out to America, that we need to get a grip because there is power and there is purpose in adversity. The first thing that we really need to do is to keep things in perspective. You know, America still remains the wealthiest nation of the world. America is still the wealthiest nation of the world. We still have the highest per capita income. We still have good infrastructure. We still have good health care. We still have low infant mortality. We still have low crime. And so we need to begin to see our glass half full rather than half empty. Keep things in perspective. There's still so much more that we have to be thankful and to be grateful about as a nation. So rather than, you know, seeing what is not, let's be thankful for what is. And that means that, you know, when we begin to see that, see thing, life from things from those perspective, we will realize that even though 7.9% or I think recently went up to 8.1% are unemployed, that means that 92% of working Americans have jobs, okay? 92%. So you see, let, let's see it from that perspective. And those who don't have jobs have the privilege uh, of getting unemployment. While I'm not um, disparaging the, the, the pain of being unemployed, but there are many nations in the world where people lose jobs, don't have jobs, and don't even have a welfare system to cater to them. And so we need to be thankful. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Take a cue, America. Take a cue from Africa, South America, and other developing nations of the world who, in spite of their, de their, their deep poverty and, uh, and, and the, 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 the deep oppression and the war and all the famines that's going on there, in spite of all that, still are full of joy. They're full of gratitude. They're full of faith. And they're full of hope. They are resilient. And they continue to trust God. And they keep believing for a better tomorrow. So I guess what I'm trying to say again is this, America, get a grip. I want you to speak to yourself and speak to your mind. Because this, this fear, is the, the psychological effect of, of, of this fear is that it's crippling. You know, people don't want to get out and do anything. People don't want to reach for their dreams anymore. It's just crippling. It's breaking our, our American spirit. And so I'm telling you, the message for today is get a grip. Get a grip, America. In the midst of the storm, lift up your head and look up. Look up. When all fails, I want you to remember that God never fails. Jesus never fails. And so my, uh, my, my, my admonition to you is do not succumb to the fear, the negativity, the, the despair. Remember that there is power and there is purpose in what we are going through right now. My, my third point in keeping things in perspective is this. You know, keeping things in perspective is this. Money hasn't left the planet, has it? <laughs> it hasn't. Think about that for a moment. The only thing that has happened is that money has relocated. It has moved from one location to the other. It's not like somebody died and um, carried all the billions of dollars uh, with them. It's not like money e evaporated into thin air. So rather than whining and complaining about how bad things are, you know, which is unprofitable, which doesn't avail much, I would rather ask that you retreat and re-strategize. So step back a little, review and reassess the situation and come up with innovative and creative strategies for the times that we are in. The economic challenges isn't so bad after all. There is power and there is purpose in adversity. You know, one of the, the, the power of adversity is that our creative energy 
is at its peak when we are between the proverbial rock and a hard place. Our creative energy, I'm sure you've heard of testimonials. I remember one, one testimonial of a woman whose car, I believe, fell on her child or something. And she, was, she just found the strength out of nowhere and she was able to lift up that car, her car, and rescue her child. So what I'm saying is that doing, when we're between that proverbial rock and a hard place, we somehow just find the, the strength to do superhuman things, you know? We, 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 we come creative. We, our creative energy is at its peak, and we come up with new ways and new ideas to be able to escape, you know, the, the, those, the, 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 the hardness and the, 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 the fix that we are in. So that's one power. That's one power in a, a adversity. The other power in adversity is that, you know, during adversity, during hard times, people seek God more. People seek God more in crisis. You know, when people cannot go forward or go backwards, when they cannot turn westwards or eastwards, do you know what happens? What usually happens is they look upwards. And anything that turns our head upwards towards the hills from whence cometh our help is a good thing and it's a powerful thing. Light usually shines brighter and is more appreciated in the midst of chaos, in the midst of despair and utter darkness. And so that's hope and great opportunity for all the children of light out there. Seize the moment. Shine your light. That's another power in adversity. You know, it's an opportunity for the light to truly shine and be appreciated. You know, another power in adversity is that in crisis, in adversity, people's values and attitudes change. <laughs> That's when people, for example, when people are on their dying bed, they're usually nicer, they're calmer, they're more sober, they're more generous. Because, you know, it's no longer time to play. You know, people trim off the fat. They get real, you know, and are usually more humane because they realize that, you know, th that, that the, the end is near, you know. And so in, at the end of the day, I, I believe that this crisis, what crisis does, what adversity does, is that it births new character. It, it will birth new character in us as a people and make us better people, more mature people. You know, our values will, be, will change. We'll start focus on the things that really, truly matter, you know, and less of, less of the greed and less of the materialism. Have you noticed how, you know, you're not as frivolous as you probably were once upon a time when the economy was very good? where you used to just stack and stack and stack and your clothes and all those frivolous things, you know? So definitely, there's good in adversity. More humility, more kindness, more compassion. So that is the power. That is the power. And there is, all, and there is also purpose. And I'm coming to the purpose now. You see, the purpose is usually to teach us something to help us to learn something. And you see, once you miss the purpose, you miss the power. Yes, I'll say that again. Once you miss the purpose, you miss the power. Once you miss the purpose, you miss the power. Remember, the storm never lasts forever. The sun will rise again, America. America will soar again. But before that happens, we must discover the purpose, and learn the lesson that God would have us to learn. So rather than whining and complaining, why don't you just ask God? Why don't you ask yourself this question? Why am I going through what I'm going through? And why are we going through what we're going through as a nation? And we'll get the answer. And God will show us the way. And you know what? The moment you discover the purpose, the moment you get the answer, the moment we learn the lesson, the storm usually ends. The day breaks. The sun shines again. So, you know, I guess I'm just saying this. Get a grip. Get a grip. I want you to speak that to yourself. You know, speak to yourself now. Speak to yourself. I'm baller. I would say baller, you know. 
get a grip. And if you're seated there watching this, and you're with a neighbor, with a friend, I want you to turn to your neighbor and speak to them. And say, get a grip, girlfriend. You know, get a grip. There is power and there is purpose in our adversity. It's so important as we're walking this journey and we're in this period of transition that as a nation that we begin to more and more and more and more have hope, have trust, have faith, you know, have faith and have courage. Think of the things that you have overcome as an individual. Think of your own personal storms. Think of the personal challenges that you faced as an individual. You survived them. While you were going through it, it was hard. <laughs> but I know that now with hindsight, you're looking back and you said, you know what? It was good for me that I was afflicted. It was good that I went through what I went through because I'm now, I, I was able to learn the precepts of God. I was able to learn from that experience. And so you, there are survivors out there. And so if you're a survivor and you have overcome, you know, you're an overcomer and a victor. So why are you panicking? Why are you so fearful? Why are you in despair? Why are you feeling as if the world is coming to an end? The world isn't ending. Neither is America coming to an end. Get a grip. Get a grip. Believe again. Believe in a brighter and better tomorrow. Believe that this too will pass. We're passing through. It's, it's a passage. We're going through. It's not our final destination. It's a transition. We're transitioning into a better place as a people, a place of revival, a place of faith, a place of trust in God, a place of better values. And so I want our, our attitudes to change. I want our attitudes to become more positive. I want our, our joy to be restored, you know. I want our joy to be restored and, and our, our faith to be restored. And I, 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 I cannot begin to um, close today's broadcast without bringing to your attention uh, particularly to all the, the women in TV land, I can't fail to bring to your attention a conference that is coming up on Saturday, May 2nd. It's called the Total Woman Conference. It's a one-day conference that's designed to care for women. And the acronym CARE stands for Celebrate, Applaud, Refresh, and equip. We want to equip. We want to celebrate. We want to applaud and refresh women in all spheres of life. And so if you're a stressed out working woman, this is the day for you. Saturday, May 2nd, the Total Woman Conference is a must attend. There'll be a variety of refreshing features to totally rejuvenate the stressed out working woman. We're going to have masseuses. There's going to be a comedian, a poet a fitness coach, and a variety of very inspirational and motivational speakers, including myself, who would be speaking at that conference to just equip us to rise to our full, how to rise to our full potential. You can learn more about the conference by visiting the conference website, www.royalproclamations.com slash TWC standing for Total Woman Conference. Again, it's www.royalproclamations.com slash TWC. And you can register, you can learn more about the conference. The Secretary of State, Susan Beiser, which will be in attendance, she'll be presenting the Women of Distinction Awards because at the conference, we're going to take time to celebrate and to applaud the often overlooked contributions that women make in our communities. So three women of distinction will be awarded and um, applauded. So make sure you make it a date. The time is 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Continental Breakfast, Box Lunch, Conference Materials is all included in the registration fee. So I truly encourage you. Again, it's Saturday, May 2nd, 2009. So I look forward to seeing you there. That's an opportunity to get to 
meet me in person. Make sure you introduce yourself as uh, one of my um, on-air friends. Praise God. So I'm about to close, and in closing now, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being a part of my first broadcast, the first broadcast of Inspired Success. Like I said, it's your monthly dose of inspiration power, the program that equips you with the power and motivation and inspiration for total success. And I'm your host, Princess Bola Adelani, the total success coach, reminding you to keep smiling, keep believing, keep learning, you know, keep on keeping on. You're on the winning side. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. God bless. Don't forget to visit my website, www.royalproclamations.com to learn more about other inspirational informational and transformational programs and look forward to seeing you at the total woman conference on saturday may 2nd at the comfort inn hotel and suite in meredith see you there thank you god bless bye